Well, we finally have a Lupin vs. Power Ranger episode focused on the Power Rangers, and... Yeah, this was a good one. It expanded on the roles of the Power Ranger a bit, their team dynamics, and the history two of them share, with Keichiro and Tsukasa, aka the girl of the group, um, being longtime partners paired together throughout um, their days as police officers since they were trainees, and how Tsukasa is pretty much how I've been characterizing her thus far with how the show's been reading. The responsible type versus Keichiro's um, bull force, um, bullheadedness. Because I don't want to say reckless because he really isn't when you look back at it. It's just that he acts before he thinks because he's so passionate. And that's different from being reckless. It's because reckless is, you know, act doing whatever you want without thought and without direction to it. At least that's my logic of bull, bullheaded um, with, you know, do, doing what you're thinking of, doing with full intent of your actions versus reckless where doing whatever you want. It, it's like, it's how I rationalize it in my mind. But yeah, Tsukasa's the like level-headed, responsible one of the two with Keichiro never being able to figure out what Tsukasa's weak point is. And then we get to what Sukasa's actual weak point is as a focus of the episode, as a bunch of people are being abducted and in, like, a variance on the locked door mystery where people go into a room with no other way out than the main door and yet are disappearing. I like those kinds of mysteries, as it has to be pretty smart to figure out how they're being caused. And hey, credit to the episode. It is actually very smart. Um... What it's eventually revealed to be is these giant stuffed shark plush dolls that are in Sailor Fuku's where when you rub your face against it, um, it triggers the, um, well, just, you know, rub rub the face of the shark, really. And it doesn't really matter if you rub your face against it or not, but that seemed to be the trigger they used the episode. Um, it then transports the... Um, one that was rubbing their face against it, to a locked cell because the monster of the week specialized in human trafficking. Yeah. This is, of course, the squicky bit because that specific, that kind of modus operandi would specifically fit for women abductions. And, well, credit where it's due, Japan did have something of a problem with that. Not with Japanese citizens doing it, but Japanese citizens being party in it for other nations like slavery rings like that happened in um i want to say as late as the 1700s because of uh, of um yeah it's one of the reasons for japan's um isolationist and xenophobic policies was pretty much just to get a stamp down on that so it would stop and that was by Hideyoshi Toyotomi, I think, if I'm remembering history correctly, or at least the parts of Japanese history I'm uh, blanking on. Um, the way I remember the guy is, he was the recurring henchman in the um, Onimusha games, which just so goes to to uh, inform how kind of my history and cultural absorption has kind of worked. I know he's not the same as that guy in the game, it's just that... Like, he was supposed to be a fictional XP of that real-life person, as was the Onimusha games want to do to cite historical contexts out of context for the sake of their story engine. Like, it's, like, half there, half isn't, and half that isn't is the mystical demon crap. But, um, back on point, um, Tsukasa, despite being the, um, responsible one, is the one that sees the odd clue and yet doesn't report it because, well, her weak point is stuffed animals. And it's like, I can kind of get her reasoning. It's like, it's so cute. It's so innocent. It's so fluffy. How could it be responsible for this? Turns out it's responsible for this because the stuffed animal is actually a disguised version of the Monster of the Week's teleporter teeth. Like, it's shark-based. And its jaws can clamp down on something, or at least if the teeth touches it, and it's instantly transported somewhere else. So that's kind of cool, but it makes me wonder how the Monster of the Week actually eats anything. If anything, its jaws clamp down on will 
teleport away. Maybe it can control the when the power triggers, but that just seems like a bit short-sighted uh, with the monster's design gimmick. But yeah, because Tsukasa thinks it's um, so adorable, she ends up doing the same thing, which discovers how the power works for it and leads them uh, to uh, Monster's Hideout. Now, a good exchange I liked in this was Tsukasa, when they first encountered the monster, is they don't know it's a monster. Tsukasa just saw the shark um, plushies and wanted one for herself because, you know, she'd been wanting... She She's plushie-obsessed. Um, and then the Lupin Ranger come in and um, show that the seller of these is a monster. So, now they go back... The, which leads to the Paddle Ranger going back to all the previous scenes of the crime and connecting the stuffed animal together because they didn't know it was a clue. They thought it was just a fad, or at least Tsukasa looked over the clue intentionally because of this weak point of hers. Which, hey, credit where it's due, it's not exactly a bad weak point at all to have it like that. You're like, you got your own passions, you have your own um, interests and likes, and more often than not, you're going to, like, give it a pass or... You're not going to think that this X, this thing that's X is actually response for what you accuse it is. Case in point, these stupid video game are cause video games are causing violence thing. Um, not that I'm saying that that's a legit thing, but people dismiss violence as being caused by that because they don't understand, they don't enjoy video games, so they ex they think it's just all video games are violence. That's that's the, the straw man arguments uh, that's done with that kind of crap. But, yeah, it's basically something's innocent that is um, being scapegoated by people who don't understand it. And this kind of seems like a bit of the same thing from Tsukasa's perspective, in that stuffed animals, plushies, are basically innocent things. Who would ever think to believe that they're actually behind um, such a horrific kidnapping and body trafficking case? And it's like, you can totally buy that. Or at least I can totally buy that. Because it's ridiculous, but it, it's with it's it's silly, but it's usual Sentai storytelling silly. So it's like, it's I totally feel like it's legit. But back to the point, when Tsukasa... When the Lupin Ranger makes a leave after the monster retreats, Tsukasa begs them to help considering they just the Lupin Ranger just learned of the human trafficking thing that's going on to give up any information they have and that's basically where they learn that the Lupin collection piece of the week has the power to disguise objects as other things so whatever's the whatever teleports the creatures teleports not, teleports people away like I said is the shark plushies which have been transformed from the monster's teeth um Tsukasa learns about the teleporter when she does the rub it against it, and then that's where it clicks for the rest of the Powder Ranger in figuring out how to get to the monster's hideout and free everybody else. Uh, with the Lupin Ranger mostly out of this because they don't have any leads on the Monster of the Week's location until the Powder Ranger do all of this. So it's showing, it's finally giving the Powder Ranger focus I have been wanting and showing that they're goofballs but they compensate for each other in that like Tsukasa is normally the reliable one but this one weak point isn't going to be something that Sakia or Keichiro are going to be affected by. Hell Keichiro knows about this as which Tsukasa is mollified to learn because he doesn't see it as a weak point. He thinks it as just something he, she likes and it's a coping mechanism and it's just it's something she's embarrassed by, which is why it's the weak point. She feels that she shouldn't still be into stuffed animals, and it's like Keichiro's just seeing, oh, you still like them? Neat. And hey, that is how you really should be with when thinking of other people's fandoms, unless it's something like really disturbingly weird. So, but y hey, you can't really judge because you've probably got your own, um, Guilty pleasures. I guess that's the best way to describe it. Tsukasa's thing with stuffed animals is a guilty pleasure. And, you know, you're going to have those things. So it's like them embracing it and not really even teasing her about it, even though she's a bit mollified. It helps to show the, the good team dynamic between them, which you should, should see from Super Sentai's teams. Now, um... A bit of the bad. The... 
Lupin Ranger kind of steal the end of the fight. Um, when um, they defeat the monster, Tsukasa is nice enough to let Umika recover the Lupin collection piece in exchange as um, thanks for giving up the information about uh, the Monster of the Week earlier in the episode. So you can also see a building of a um, non-hostile relationship between the two sides here in that there's a nudge-nudge, wink-wink, we help each other, and then we both get our ultimate goals out of this, which I like. But um, the end of the result happened, the end result that um, ultimately annoyed me about this was in the giant monster fight of the week, Pat Kaiser is being overwhelmed because it's the tanking brawler with the beat stick and the hand cannon, but um, it doesn't have the agility that Lupin Kaiser does to like evade strikes and have these tricky ways of getting around things. Now, they solve this conundrum here by shoving the Power Rangers out of their mechs and having the Lupin Rangers take over the good striker to to um form Lupin Kaiser. Even though they, oh, even when they were entering the battle in their jets, they disabled this um, monster's teleporter teeth network by just their main fighter fighter mech's uh, basic abilities. They didn't need to switch um, switch up mech combinations to do that, and it felt like that. It felt like that same derision of the Pat Ranger thing from before, where. It so easily could have been written as the Lupin Ranger entered their fighters, disable this thing, and allow the um, allow Pat Kaiser to finish it off. They could have so easily done that and uh, continued to like build this step by step camaraderie between them. Whereas, more this feels like something that would, um, in the end, make them have bitter feelings over this more than just, you know, professional disdain for thieves and criminals that seems to be Kate Shiro's, um, most central, um, why he's so antagonistic to the otherwise decently acting, uh, Lupin Ranger. So, if it's like, if Kate, if, um, the Lupin Ranger team would keep giving these gestures that they're not actually bad guys, they're just doing this because they have their reasons, then I feel like further things in the show would not be so obnoxious. Like, next week, they're apparently going to give some of their... The Lupin Rangers are going to reveal some of their backstory to the Pata Ranger of why they're being thieves, and that would be better facilitated by them never, like, going out of their way to antagonize the cops. So... Uh, you know, it always, it would make them ease up over time instead of it being uh, spits and spats back and forth between them that it seems to currently be focused as. As minutely, in a versus event, you expect them to be quarreling, but it's like, you can't keep having it both ways and not have some form of lingering animosity build up from it. If you're getting my gist, it's like, it's, I feel where they botched the episode overall in the conclusion to it. But hey, at least they're progressing some things to like get a viable working relationship together. And they develop, finally get to developing the thus far neglected part of the team here. Tsukasa is thus far best girl for the show with the balancing they've done with her. So, yeah, overall, better than the, well, the the previous two episodes. It's usually why my mainstay is five, because you can have some pretty bad openings. Build, however, is continuing its story arc with Misora being possessed by the power of Pandora, or at least the power of her bangle to end the last episode's fight with Rogue by her pretty much just letting her be subsumed by the bangle's power and then opening the sky wall and shoving the Hell Brothers and Rogue through it to end the previous fight before she collapses. And it's like, that is some extreme power, and, at le and we're finally getting some context to the Bangle, in that um, Soichiro found it on Mars and then just gave it to Misora on a whim. 
whether he knew what it actually is, what it actually does, is suspect. But I think he has an idea of what it's supposed to do. Misora also reveals that when she um, uses the when she has used the bangle to purify the full bottles, she has some memory of presumably given by the bangle of Mars's destruction, and it's presumed to be that power that's inside the Pandora's box that ultimately resulted in that. Now, with respect to Mars going from a, a uh, sweeping civilization to barren dust i think the idea is um the the planet burned so the atmosphere was lost which led to its current red ba red dusted frozen state at least from at least the logic i'm following but um what sento's tried to do here with that is try and synchronize the bangle with her thought process to see if that will trigger anything and it just triggers a re replay of the memory so for all we know the spirit of the bangle is the relating to the myth of pandora at least it's a spirit like pandora in that contained within the box is the remainder of the world's hope with um misora's ability to purify the full bottles and heal those that are damaged by the smash and the nebula gas and all that it makes it seem like this was the signifier of hope for that civilization that this would not come to pass again. And these are the tools born through that evil that will help bring salvation to everything. At least that's the logic I'm running with with all of this. Nanba Heavy Industries is also not happy to see this resource, but they, that pretty much gets subverted to just going back to getting the Pandora's box. Here we have some pretty clever interplay with the team in that they need to figure out who keeps letting Nanba and Sato's forces in on all of their secret information. So, um, Sento runs a scam where he selects a bunch of suspects and then gives them different information on where the Pandora box has been moved to to be hidden, and then they scout out where the, um... Sato forces go to figure out who would have given them the information. It was, of course, the secretary to um, Toto's minister, which makes sense. That um, entire area, entire um, administration seems to be infested with spies and traitors in the midst going for their own versions of power. Case in point, the whole mess with Gentoku before he went rogue. And yes, I said that intentionally. I did not think of the pun until I just said it. Um, so it makes the most sense for if there was going to be a traitor in their midst beyond who else we already saw, it had to be them. Um, additional thing on the Misora thing, uh, the only thing that... She says one word when she's possessed by what I'm presuming to call Pandora, and it's Evolt. Now... Kamen Rider Evil is an upcoming Kamen Rider for the series, presumably showing up around episode, I would think it would be in the 30s, and be the pretense by which for Sento to gain his upcoming genius form, final form, where, which combines all the full bottles into one genius mixture, I guess. But, um, it's... The be next piece in the mystery and what that actually is p potentially is, but regardless, this is still focused on the Pandora Box stuff where Gentoku has managed to figure out its hiding place and its sole remaining protector, who is, um, Akava, the castle heart smash, and it's like, it's pretty much his last stand as he tries to save it in the name of his lost friends. And, well, yeah, Kazumi lost another friend here, but damn, did they not go down swinging. And then, of course, we have the three-man uh, tra team transformation by the three allied riders here. And pretty much a resolve that they're going to shut down Gentoku's machinations. 
But all three of them again get their asses handed to them, and they can't really help but do anything but go let Sento use the hazard trigger, but he almost immediately gets taken over by it. Now, as I've said before on this matter, because of the um, very lengthy, day-long battle Sento had with uh, Kazumi on that platform for the proxy fights against between Hokuto and Toto, we know that he can last longer using the hazard trigger than this, so it's like weak it's weak points where he goes crazy, like keeps being showcased, shouldn't be triggering as soon. The only reason I could think that it didn't is he was so distraught and destabilized by seeing someone else die, just overtaken by so much anger and a wish to end this that he gave in to the Hazard Trigger's release, because it really seems like this point that he should have a handle on it for short-term fights, and he just can't bring out the full power of it as he can when he just gives in. But the problem of, of giving in to that and letting himself go recklessly berserk is he can't distinguish friend from foe. So Gentoku lets um, Kazumi get in the way of one of his blows, and then the out of his mind Senso can't distinguish that he's that um, Kazumi's not rogue, so beats him into the ground. Ryuga, because he is, he seems to be the show's worthless character, uh, was already beaten to the ground and is completely out of the battle by this point because that's what this show keeps doing with him. And so there's no one there to stop Senso raging, um, rampaging, and attacking Misora, who is also there. Now this is obviously leading into the reveal of Rabbit Rabbit Tank Tank, aka the Rabbit Tank um, Super Full Bottle. I just keep referring to the entire thing as Rabbit Rabbit Tank Tank because that sounds hilarious. Because at the as the episode is ending, the bracelet shines as the Berserk Sento is preparing to like kill her. He's he's literally got her lifted up against a bar and is making the pose to punch when that starts glowing. So it's likely going to subsume Hazard's power and then whatever like because this is the thing with the Pandora box thing uh items is all of Sento's special forms seem to be generated by some external power. Like we got Rabbit Tank sparkling because of residue that formed off of the Pandora's box, and him building Rabbit Rabbit Tank Tank must be something similar. It might be a further purification of Hazard Tank of um, Rabbit and Tank. Uh, the power of the Rabbit Full Bottle and the Tank Full Bottle used through the XP of the Hazard triggers enhancement of them to further purify them into this new device. Like this is the the predictive logic I'm running on, giving on. Um, what we've gotten so far with this series, and, you know, that makes so much sense, because the literal last frame of the episode before they go to the next time on screen is the tank side of Sento's mask being subsumed by another rabbit on there, so I'm guessing that's how they're going about this, and we will probably see how that goes next time. Um, but yeah. As usual, build as a rampage, but I'm liking that we got a bit more of a balance with the pa with the Lupin Ranger, Paddle Ranger stuff going. I'm hoping that continues to the next episode, so we can be fully balanced out on this, and then then we can actually start trading episodes with this Sentai team and all this. Because God, it really needs it. It's like I feel the constant um, issue with Lupin Ranger versus Paddle Ranger is just to wrap everything up again, is it's not actually bad, but it has all these interim problems that keep it from being outstanding, like we honestly need. Maybe it'll get there, hopefully once it's balanced between the groups, it will get there, because, like, some shows just need a few more episodes to build up the, um, build up their story engine so everything can work correctly, and it feels like it needs to get there sooner rather than later. Yeah. Alright, that's all I got for this week. I'll see you all later.